let's continue with uh, just a brief discussion, discussion about how a drilling rig, a rotary drilling rig, operates. Now we've, we've thought about the fact that it lifts, it rotates, and it pumps. That's the function of the equipment associated with a drilling rig. Um, now I'd like to talk a little bit <clears throat> about what these guys are doing. There's a driller, he's responsible for everything. He's the hoister, he's the rotator, he's the guy that keeps the pumps working. But we have other people. Generally there are two floor hands. And then there's another guy that's up here. He stands on a monkey board, they call it. And he's called the Derrick Man. These are all dangerous jobs, extremely dangerous. And um, it, it takes guys with a lot of courage and stamina. It's really hard work what they have to do. So let's look at what they're doing. First of all, a drill pipe, a, dr a piece of drill pipe is about 30 feet long. It has threads on uh, exterior threads on one end, they stick out on the other, this would be the female and the threads are on the inside. So you have male threads, female threads. This is a pipe, the total extent of which is about 30 feet, generally 4 inch diameter. This varies depending on how deep they go. And it's hollow on the inside. That's so they can pump mud, drilling mud, down through the pipe and uh, use it to clean out the hole and keep it from kicking. Okay. Generally, on a rig like this, we're talking about this rig is 150 feet from the crown block down to, and in the Libyan Sahara, they actually put down pallets made of steel. They made a steel floor to set the substructure on. So it's about 150 feet from sand level up to the top. These men uh, are responsible for making sure the pipe goes down in the hole. They are responsible to connect pieces of pipe. Generally, they screw together three 30-foot sections to make a 90-foot, uh, what they call a stand. <clears throat> this work is extremely dangerous. I remember when I was working in Texas and Louisiana, uh, being on the drilling floor as they were coming out. Uh, not everybody, but there were a lot of guys who were missing fingers. A lot of guys that are missing fingers. Now why would they be missing fingers? These men, <clears throat> one of the big responsibilities is to screw these pipes together or to unscrew them. The torque, that is the amount of force, twisting force necessary is unbelievable. They didn't use crescent wrenches or pliers. They used what they call chain tongs. These are heavy. The arm of each one could be three to five feet, maybe even more, in length. And they have uh, teeth on them that grasp the pipe. And then they have chains attached to the ends. And these chains pull those big wrenches together to tighten the pipe, or they go to the opposite side and pull them to loosen the pipe. But here's the whole point. One chain tong weighs a lot. It's suspended in the air uh, by a cable. It has a counterweight. One man could not lift one of those with ease, or possibly not even lift it. So they hang in space on chains or cabling. But those guys have to attach the jaws of the chain tong around the pipe. Well, where do the fingers get in? When that driller starts pulling on these chains, if that thing slips and your hands are in the wrong place, your fingers are gone. It is extremely dangerous and it is really hard work. I'm amazed at uh, what these men uh, can do. 
Okay, so what's on the end of the drill string? Well, there's a typical rock bit. It's generally, uh, in uh, the places that I saw drilling activity, a tricone bit, but they're all kinds. Some have diamonds on them for real hard rock. Uh, others are hardened steel with little knobs on them. It's conical, shaped like a cone, like an ice cream cone. And they're on a shaft mounted to the bottom of this tricone bit. Now, each one of these tricones can rotate on its own shaft. So we're looking at the bottom of the bit. When this is lowered against rock, as this turns, each of these cones start turning, but the speed of each layer of these cutting knobs is different. So they really grind up the rock. So these are three conical cutters. Now, there are three openings between the conical cutters, and this is where the mud gets pumped out. The mud can be directed against the cones, the cutting cones, to clean off any rock debris. Or it can be directed straight down, blasting at the rock that they're going through and bringing the cuttings back up outside the pipe. Okay, this, these are highly engineered. Now it's interesting to me that um, a famous guy by the name of Howard Hughes, I'm sure you recognize his name, really wealthy, a very uh, odd guy, but uh, did some really important things. Um, his dad started the company that first started making these drilling bits. It was the Hughes Tool Company, they still operate. Okay, so the drilling bit is attached to the drill string at the bottom. Now, the drilling bit <clears throat> also is attached to some things called collars. These are solid steel. Depending how much weight you want on top of that drill, that drill bit, you would put any number of these thick-walled steel collars. If this box right here is four, foot, or four inches in diameter, that's got to be four inches. But they're solid steel, and they're extremely heavy. And what they do is provide force to be kept against the face of the drill bit as it cuts through the rock. Okay, so these two guys are responsible to put together the pipe sections to take apart the pipe sections. So let's suppose they're coming out of the hole. When they come out, these two guys unscrew a 90-foot section and then they place that 90-foot section, it's vertical, it's being pulled up by the traveling block, they put it into something <clears throat> which is called a fingerboard. In other words, they pull this pipe out, they unscrew it with their chain tongs, they grab the pipe as it's being suspended in space, they grab that pipe, that 90-foot section, and they'll put it into one of these finger slots. Now, the guy that's really got the dangerous job is the Derrick man. He takes a hold of what they call elevators that are attached to the drill pipe, and when they're coming out of the hole, he has to stand on the monkey board and reach way out. He's got special uh, belts on, safety belts, but he leans way out beyond that board. So if he's here, he's leaning way out. Um, very precarious. He has to wrestle that 90-foot stand. He's got to pull it over and slide it into the right finger. And then he has a piece of rope and he ties it in. Okay, let's suppose this well started to blow out. That happens on occasion. We would hope it doesn't, but sometimes it does. What would that guy do? He's bound in that belt. 
if this well kicked, it would go straight up. The speed of, and the rock coming out of that hole would kill him instantaneously. And chances are the gas and oil in it, because of friction as it comes up that drill hole, would catch on fire and he would be burned up in a, in a second. So they have what they call a Geronimo line. It's a steel cable attached to the derrick and it's got a little device with a handle on it. If that thing starts to kick, he would unloose his belt, grab the handle with both hands, it's got a brake on it, so he can slow his speed, and he would travel down that line at high speed until he reached the desert floor. I never saw a guy have to do it, but I saw and heard stories about wells that had kicked in the past where life was in danger. So the point we want to make is very complicated what goes on on a drilling rig, and yet at the same time it's rather simple. It's just lifting, turning, and pumping. But it takes highly specialized, highly trained guys uh, that are courageous, strong, they're physically strong, that do this work, and it's super dangerous. Um, on one well, this dead man lying here that never moves, there was a guy in Libya standing next to it with his hand on it, and they were stuck at the bottom, and the drillers pulling up hundreds of thousands of pounds, and all of a sudden the bit came loose, which threw slack into all the cabling because the traveling block jumped up a couple of feet, and then it slammed back down. The guy's got his hand against the cable, right? It's taut when they're pulling up, but the minute it came loose on the bottom, there's all this slack, all of a sudden he disappeared. He was like an arrow shot out of a bow. When that crashed back down, this became taut again and it threw him off uh, to the side. So here's the whole point. It's a, it's a very dangerous operation, but when it's done correctly, following common sense uh, safety standards, it uh, produces oil and gas for us. We are the recipients of the blessing. Very good. So if you ever have a chance to see one of these, I would encourage you to look. I was on a site location in Texas one time and a Cadillac drove up on the drilling site and there were three men in the Cadillac and they had bib overalls on and they had toothpicks in their mouth or a straw or something and they were old country boys and they drove up on location <clears throat> and the tool pusher, that's the name of the foreman on every drilling rig, is in charge of the whole thing came out and said, what do you guys want? and he said, hey we're from Kentucky man, we, we're in a drilling business up in Kentucky and we ain't never seen a rig this big how deep you going? And the tool pusher said, we're going to 15,000 feet. And they said, 15,000. said, man, we drill down about 500 foot in the field we operate in, and we get oil there. What a contrast. A 500 foot hole with a 15,000 foot hole. They were absolutely astounded at the complexity of the equipment they saw, which they should be. They had a very profitable company. In fact, those three country boys were making big money when they told us. They only produced a few barrels a day from their wells. They had to pump them. But uh, the stories they told about how much money they were making was phenomenal. Okay, so that is basically the mechanics of a rotary drilling rig. And next time we'll talk about the moving rig. <laughs> it's the biggest portable drilling rig in the world, or it was at that time.